So I'm, I'm very curious about, thank you for this, 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 these details. So you're in the National Assembly, and um, you know, it's been, there's been all these rumors of civil war possibilities, and, and it seems like there is this there is a ton of, there's a kind of civility war going on, and uh, you're, the, the Assembly is meeting, or is there a forum? Are they able to conduct business, and are they able to challenge the illegal behavior of the Bolivian civil rights and the president. Is that the Bolivian Commission on Human Rights, or is that a, an international commission? If I could just jump in here and ask a, a couple of things, maybe while you're there um, at the National Assembly, you described earlier that the uh, MAS party has control of the National Assembly and the self-proclaimed government has control of the governmental palace, I believe you said. So I'm hearing this and I'm thinking of these many styles of hybrid war that the U.S. and various allies and institutions have launched in the hemisphere recently. We basically they are looking, you're physically looking at a parallel government there in La Paz. One, one institution is housing the coup installed government and the other housing the elected government. And so how, how is this all playing out um, politically? I mean, we're seeing and hearing violence, but um, we're not seeing much, if anything, in mainstream um, North American news and so it's just really wonderful to have you on the phone live with us describing all of this but it does seem yet again another form of u.s enforced hybrid warfare playing out well there's also the issue of who controls the military police 
So if you are actually in the, the assembly building, will you be able to be there when they, they meet tomorrow? Well, yes, I can come in here because I'm a foreigner and I have a test plan. But normal Bolivians aren't even allowed to enter the museum. Um, where you have to show your ID at the entire square. It's more than the square, the whole area around this is in the dark. And you can only get in um, with an ID. And so we are allowed in, but the Bolivian people are not allowed in. So they should be able to see any of them, but we will. So, Medea, you mentioned you have a press pass. Are you seeing um, any uh, foreign journalists at all? Is, is there any sort of a larger press corps representing U.S., Canada, Europe? Is anybody there other than, than you? And we thank God you are there. Well, more are coming in. Um, we see representatives from uh, the Spanish uh, and media and they, um, we see that there are uh, journalists now who are writing to uh, the Guardian and Eastern Affairs, actually in some of the countries, and in some of the pieces from that state, um, the uh, Washington Post, it's not from a, anybody on the ground, but uh, from an Asian uh, editorial about uh, the pieces from the state, um, that just seems to, um, there has been some reporting, but not nearly on the level that it should be, and the reporters you see are treated as kings. And that's also shows us it's very difficult to get around. Um, you get to say, Papa, you have to walk miles because there's no transportation. And, and that's, again, because the people have imposed this uh, blockade. Uh, so if you want to, um, uh, in, in this case, it's hard for me to have a hand yet. So there's not a lot of press. But in any case, uh, this is a major uh, happening in Latin America, and it should be so different for this kind of people. And unfortunately, it's not. So I'm glad to be here, and I think uh, we're getting the best account on social media out there in case we need to come. Certainly in the United States, I guess we don't know anything about what's happening here in the United States, except for the few things that I've mentioned, which are uh, editorial. So I would want to just mention to our listeners and to our 
Facebook Live audience that we are at Code Pink building a Bolivia news page to um, house all of Medea's reports, including uh, her time with us today and her live streams, so that we will have one um, news source for um, the press to go to and for the general public to go to. Everything will be housed on one page, codepink.org slash Bolivia News. Oh, that's really excellent. I'm so happy to be in the 21st century that we're able to get this. So, Medea, what um, what are your encouragements for people here besides getting in touch with uh, Michelle Bachelet sending the uh, the petition to her and uh, and certainly to get the you know to let the press know that we want them covering us. Um, it, one of the things that's, that sounds interesting is you've got the this coup government who's not letting people in. And you've got the uh, indigenous people who are not letting supplies out. Um, is is this a stalemate? Is this is this going to break? Or is this going to be something that that's resolved easily? Well, it's certainly not going to be resolved easily, but we've got to break it someplace because um, if we get some of these people uh, to stay the bill and uh, the uh, breaking of the peace, it was only momentary. Uh, they uh, got out maybe from 50 or 60 uh, tanks of gasoline, but that's not even enough for one day to come apart. So there is still a long time for gasoline, and in some areas, it's going to be free. Uh, so this needs to be going on. And I think because of how uh, many of the international community in Latin America at least are coming to join, uh, hopefully very soon, the Nation of Rights Initiative and be able to see what she's getting out, it's not going to be that easy for the government to spend this kind of way. So you know, there, these negotiations um, have to move forward, and they have to be dismantled for uh, a dialogue between some agreement about how the elections are going to be carried out. And uh, I don't know, I mean, the indigenous communities that we're in touch with say there is absolutely no way that this government is capable of uh, conducting the elections that it is paying for. And we would we will not allow any elections to happen as a fair deal. So this is the kind of negotiation that uh, has to take place. And, and you know it's interesting, I think there are people in the Mac group who are poor saying to the um, folks in the Black Twitter group, oh maybe she got off and, and maybe this is a good idea. And people are not going by the direction. Uh, huh. They're going by their own uh, uh, anger and saying, no, these are murderers, these are racists, they have uh, defiled our flag, they don't respect our uh, indigenous customs and traditions, uh, we are not going to have a free empire. So this is a, a showdown. Wow. It's the poor, humble, indigenous people who are wearing the red, um, maybe the middle class is not getting their chicken, they're not getting the amount of food they want. The people who are being rounded up and thrown into jail and beat up for a reason, all the gangs that are going to be in the future. Yeah. Uh, Medea, we know I understand you're going to have to end soon, but uh, there's a, another international body that, uh, that you haven't spoken about, and we'd like to know what, what are you hearing from the OAS in Bolivia, if anything? Well, the OAS, by the uh, people who voted for Evo Morales, is considered controlled by the United States and considered the institution that really led uh, to this coup being successful. So there's a lot of people this year out there to the OAS, and uh, people want the United Nations, not the OAS, to be the ones who would uh, be monitoring any possible new elections that might be set up. Uh, and I, you know, in terms of what people can do at home, I think the narrative is very clear. And we need to judge people by whether um, they're going to call this a coup and whether they're going to call um, for the um, resignation of this new government. And I think we should be suspicious. And I know you have been involved in some of this on the school day, so I'm going to leave you to tell people more about what you're experiencing. But I think it's really important to be careful. Uh, our elected officials uh, and anybody who 
that has political power to develop what's happening here. And the other thing that's kind of important to do, and I'm going to try to put the work into this today, to get the indigenous community in the United States uh, to be more involved in this. Uh, there should be representatives that come down because this is really a, a struggle about indigenous rights uh, versus descendants of the European uh, colonial uh, group that has had control of this country uh, for a hundred years or so over Morales being president. So we need to frame it in that way. And I know there are representatives from indigenous communities all up the Latin America who are making their way here to show support and uh, what's going to happen in the United States. Maybe it is happening, I don't know, but I think we should uh, do more to uh, make sure that this is on the radar in the indigenous community in the U.S. We certainly can, and I, it's heartening to hear that other indigenous peoples of course throughout the Americas are going to Bolivia. So thank you, Medea from La Paz. We're going to take um, a short station break. Can you stay with us for a few minutes more, or, or are you off to more witnessing? Yeah, I have some interviews set up with some of these uh, representatives that I don't want to leave. So I thank you for having me on. And I um, know that Ed King is doing great work on this issue and putting out really good information. And uh, people can go to my live stream as well on the events on our Facebook uh, to see more that we will be putting out today when that fancy conversation is going to be held in El Paso. It should be quite a sight to see. And uh, I look forward to being there on the live stream. And so thank you, Ms. Bennett, for giving me a chance to uh, get some. Uh, the on the oh, thank you. Good. And take good care and love to you and Ty. <laughs> and thank you folks. We'll be back with you shortly for our second half hour of conversation. That's what I meant by that. <laughs> What's that? She was on the phone for 15 minutes with me. I never told her. I texted her. She texted me. She said I've been on hold for 15 minutes. Yeah, we got, yeah, we both got that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thanks for writing that. Yeah. Well, it was great. Huh? Well, what you guys did do was great. Um, yeah. Would you, when we go back on, would you give the telephone number to people who want to call in? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Welcome back to Code Pink Radio, live from WPFW Washington, D.C., and simulcasting from WBA High New York City every Thursday, 11 a.m. Um, Eastern Time. This is Carrie Matson with Code Pink, and I'm um, speaking with Hockey Whelan this morning, and thank you for having me come on the air with you. It's always a pleasure to co-host the show with you. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> and thank you, Reagan Davis, for live streaming and providing our, our news for us. So I just want to say that fabulous song, that very powerful piece.
people song that you were all just listening to. Most of you who are familiar with Latin America probably do know the piece. It's El Pueblo Unido Jamás Será Vencido. Uh, the people united will never be defeated. And that was a particular uh, favorite recording of mine from Inte y Limán. Let's see. Welcome to years and years. So um, we have a call number that you can call in to uh, to express your opinions, to let us know what what you think about what's happening in Bolivia and uh, and how you're connected to this. So the and number that is number is two zero two five eight eight zero eight nine three. So please feel free to join us in conversation with your questions and comments. So um, that was that was quite a, a, a an interview with Medea Benjamin, who, uh, as she described it, really I, I really had that feel for the two camps being in these two positions, and uh, and no one physically else. and literally we yes. have one in the National Assembly and across the street one in the presidential palace, and so there is a physically and uh, and um, intellectually or uh, it is parallel. Yes, parallel governments established right now. It's a it's quite graphic. Yeah, not talking theoretically about the two different bodies, and and the other thing that's so striking though is that uh, the indigenous people aren't allowed unless they're part of the assembly, and that uh, that only people foreigners with press credentials can get in. And so we're very happy that we have our on the spot Medea Benjamin there with her press credentials who is able to let you know in ways that no one else in the country is hearing about what's happening in Bolivia. So I want to mention again, because of that, because there's so little external press um, in Bolivia right now, that here at Code Pink, we are creating a Bolivia news page, codepink.org slash Bolivia news, so that you can easily access all of the live streams, radio interviews, um, et cetera, that um, Medea particularly, but several other people from um, Code Pink have been producing as well, um, just to provide that as a, as a news source for all of you. So let, let's uh, answer one of the questions that, that Medea posed to us, and that was what is happening vis-a-vis -vis our work on Capitol Hill. We uh, have spent a couple of number of hours visiting people of our own representatives and uh, and representatives of groups like the uh, Progressive Caucus and the uh, the Black Caucus and uh, we have had varying experiences with them. Um, it's it's quite surprising, and we want to give a shout out to Hank Johnson. Hank Johnson. Well, so you and I and Leonardo Flores and Michelle Elmer. Um, four of us and Reagan um, at one or two meetings, we spent Tuesday afternoon on the Hill, um, basically visiting members of the Congressional Progressive Caucus and asking them to make statements. Twitter, I think uh, we, it was Jim McGovern's office that uh, Progressive Caucus members who at the very least a message stating that what happened in Bolivia on Sunday, November 10, was actually a coup. And um, it was startling, disappointing to see, even among progressive members, one, how few people actually were focused on this, and how little knowledge they have, which we are, which was part of our role to, to break the, the lack of knowledge, and we're continuing to do that with Medea on the ground in La Paz. But it's really, really important for Congress and the public to understand that what did happen on November 10th was, in fact, a coup. And uh, that's our job, is to get that into the narrative and start influencing um, that um, specific event and to call it out as such. Yeah, it's been very interesting, uh, the whole question of whether it's a coup and what, what constitutes a coup. Um, that, and, and I think a lot of this is simply semantic. Because yeah. when the, uh, the president of a country is threatened, when his family is threatened, when members of his family are threatened uh, with, with physical violence, 
um, and leave the country as an action of, uh, of, of, of conciliation, of trying to stop the, uh, the violence in, in this country that, uh, that looks like a coup to me. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure what you think about that. Well, I, I, I most certainly would call it a coup, but you know, that's me watching. Um, I, I, one thing I want to say while we're having this conversation, and I just, and it's something that I just like to do um, before we go any further into details and observations. This is one thing that I like to make very clear when you welcome me onto programs like this is that my experience in Latin America and the Caribbean has been travel over the last 35 to 40 years. But it's very important um, for me to let all of you know that my witnessing is that of a white English speaking woman from the Northern Hemisphere. And so I'm not going to pretend to be indigenous, Latina, or, you know, and my role, and I think Poppy, you, would, you are of the same philosophy, and all of us at the Code Pink, quite frankly, our role is to observe what's happening outside of, of the United States, to understand what role our own government has in foreign actions, and to influence um, our own government's behavior. And it's becoming more and more clear that the United States um, had a role in this coup in Bolivia on Sunday, November 10th, vis-a-vis -vis, um, manipulation and use of the Organization of American States. And I want to just read to you um, this morning something that's maybe a little encouraging for the Morales government and, uh, and sheds a little um, light on the United States government's potential role here. Um, so this is grapevine gossip word on the street, not hard news, but I will share this. Um, that Evo Morales is hoping that perhaps the Pope will come uh, and intervene and in, uh, preventing a, a full-blown civil war eruption. And, um, and that there's also talk that the State Department and or Defense Department was handing out bags of money to uh, generals. Um, within uh, the Bolivian military. So this is, these are all scenarios that we have seen in the past. And the playbook is, is the same playbook we've seen, seen since the end of World War II and, and uh, just gets used over and over again. I think, you know, you're right on and I think that it's, it's, it's really worthwhile punctuating that, that what our work is about is, is calling out our own government holding it responsible. We have a call. All right, let's take this caller. Yeah, uh, this is Cliff. I'm on the uh, local station board of the station. I think this is the most important program I've ever heard on the station. Obviously of world importance, and I just want to thank you for putting it on. Thank you so much. Well, thanks, Cliff, thank and thank everybody here at WPFW for having us. It's an honor that we've been invited to, you know, to create this program. I just hope it gets across to the whole country and the whole world what you put on here because I, you know, you said it, uh, we do not know, we do not have this information. So the major press is not giving it to us, not create, treating it with the great importance that it has. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, well, it's a nice uh, confluence of both Code Pink and community radio. So thank you, and uh, and we'll keep on keeping on, keep pushing this envelope. Oh, I know you will. I, 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 I love Cindy, and she's great. Thank you. So do we. So I have to say, with community radio, aren't we like so thrilled to have WBAI back on the air in New York City? So, so one of the things we're, we're talking about is is the role of us uh, white folks in North America, and uh, and that this responsibility we have to to hold our government accountable and to keep naming every time we see and we have evidence of its. Uh, of it's not respecting the sovereignty of other countries, and we could we could spend uh, five or six shows just counting and just going over all of those. But right now, I think what what Medea was was speaking to is something that that I'd like our listeners to to help with, and that is to to reach out to various indigenous communities that we're aware of to uh, to support them in supporting the indigenous people in Bolivia. So there was one thing that regarding that that you know Medea mentioned that the indigenous population in Bolivia is not allowed to come to the National Assembly. And this is something 
that unfortunately is not new in the history of the Americas. This is a 500 year old theme um, with the introduction of um, white Christianity from Western Europe by the Spanish Empire 500 years ago. And um, it's playing out again on a very raw surface level. We saw the stand up president um, inaugurate herself um, with a huge Bible in her hand. And um, so all of this is, we have another caller. Yes. Oh, terrific. Thank you. Hello there. Hi, hello. Uh, thank you so much for your program as well and for all of the work you do. I just wanted to contribute that what I do locally is I try to get people to run for local elections in this county and we have a huge local election. My home state. And North Dakota has a public bank that's like 100 years old, and we have huge social service out here. We took the character of the public bank or the director of the bank, a public bank having the means of control of the money, yeah. uh, a means of uh, producing <laughs> like they do. They make money out of thin air. <laughs> right. um, well, that public bank in North Dakota was one of the very few banks that did, was not at the risk of failing in September of 2008. That's it. it right, it, correct. At the least uh, unemployment rate too. And yeah. so it's important to me. And so uh, people are taking me and I'm writing it down with New York City, New York City uh, Public Bank, NYC.org. They're trying to get it in New York City. And so I'm trying to get it in my town on Long Island. And so I have a website Okay. Thank you. We got another call. Sorry to cut you off here, but everybody's got your your website, and it's you're just re reminding us that to, to think globally and act locally. Thank you. We'll, we'll pick up this other call. Thank you. And hello. Hello, is this me? Yes, it's you. Hi, this is Julie Barnett. Hi, Pat, you are here. Oh, hi. Hi, Julie. Hi. I, I, going back a few minutes to the previous point that you were making about um, the role of European, um, you know, Western or First World or whatever those, uh, those terms are used of, of the left.
Because it was wrong, and both uh, you can quote the world, but it was especially here. So we said it was wrong, that was the point. Whereas now, we're all about it. It's just so many people swear that we're all about world government, and morality government, or that we're all about pagan government, etc., etc., etc. And because there are multiple criticisms of these, that the uh, opposition. Yes. Yeah. This is why the, the external journalism is so necessary and to break this U.S. narrative that we're up against right now. Because Eva Morales was managing um, one of the best economies in the Americas and took a significant number of people out of poverty and out of illiteracy and homelessness and lack of health care. So we can presume at this point that he was not removed from office because he had a failing economy. He was removed from office for many other variables, including you know, empowering indigenous people, which has not been uh, desired in the Americas, as we were mentioning earlier, for the last 500 years. His country sits on a wealth of natural resources that transnational corporations want access to. So there's a lot of things happening other than running a bad economy. We're not hearing oppressiveness of people from him or any of that. And I think this is where, you know, it's so blatantly racist that, uh, and we have to be blind not to see that, um, and, and how it, it falls in line with the, you know, the how many years of the Monroe Doctrine, how many years of, uh, of manifest destiny, and finally, you know, this whole narrative is, is being challenged. And I think this is the opportunity for us, as uh, you and the three of us sitting here this evening are, uh, are all white beneficiaries of, of white nationalism, of white supremacy. And it's our opportunity, whenever the, this group of indigenous people starts taking the leadership for us to follow them and to, and to learn from them and to support them that, uh, you know, we have uh, so many times uh, these poor, fragile white folks are scratching our heads saying, what can we do? You know, we don't want to be the bad people. And so here's something we can do. We can learn more about the indigenous people and we can support them and, and they're taking the lead in their own empowerment. And so with that, maybe we, uh, we need to let all of you go until next week. But um, this is a really, really important um, geopolitical um, event um, continuing to unfold in Bolivia. And so we would encourage all of you um, listening to seek as many alternative news sources um, as you can. One of, one of um, our favorites is the Center for Economic Policy and Research, CEPER.net. Um, and they have produced a number of recent reports as to the results of the election, the OAS involvement in Bolivia, et cetera. Okay, so that's, uh, we just got the sign to, uh, to say goodbye. So uh, thank you, Terry. Thank you, Reagan. And uh, we'll, we'll see you see next, next week. Bye-bye. Or two weeks, actually, I think. Oh, yeah, because next week we've got the... Yeah. You know, it's so funny, there's this 